This is my $500 paperweight. It works really well at holding down papers when I need to sketch things out or as added to weight when I need to glue things up. So why don't I use it for sanding? I bought it about three years ago based on some really good reviews for it. Then I found out that it has the same problem that all of my bubble jet printers had. The consumables like the inkjet cartridges for printers were too much. Believe me when I say that the sanding tubes are unbelievably expensive. The ones I'm able to find for it don't sand enough off while having a very limited lifespan. So today we're going to make our own sanding tubes. We'll be able to use whatever sandpaper we want, which will give this machine a new life in my shop. And since I don't expect everyone to run out to buy this, the same method of making the tubing will also work for a common drill press drum sander. Before we get started, for each of the methods we'll go over, every method is going to involve overlapping the sandpaper. If you look at normal tube sandpaper, you can see that it's been spirally wrapped. Overlapping the sandpaper does work, but the only drawback to doing this is that the sanding isn't as smooth as a spirally wrapped tube sandpaper. There will be a slight vibration. This doesn't in any way affect the overall sanding. Also because we're overlapping it, it's obviously important to make sure you have it wrapped in the right direction or it will want to unravel. Most spindle sanders use a rubber tube that slides into a sandpaper roll. A long stud is inserted with a nut on the end. When you tighten the nut down, the rubber pushes outwards and creates enough pressure to hold the tube on. This method is really simple to replicate. I'll make one now with a rigid oscillating spindle sander roll. And it's really simple, I'm just gonna put it on the edge here. I'm gonna take a pencil and just mark where it's at. And then we'll spin this around. I'm gonna overlap it maybe a quarter of an inch. I'll draw a line. And once again, I'm gonna come over here with my roll. Here's my roll. When I roll it together like this, I'm gonna use hot glue to hold it down. And yes, hot glue works. I've never had it fail on me. I wanna put it as close as I can to the rubber tube without getting it on the rubber tube. Roll this on like that. It's very simple and it can be loose. It doesn't really matter because once again, bolt that we put through this will cause it to expand. So I'll just go ahead and put this on the post there. Now we'll tighten it down, which will cause it to expand and really grab onto the, the roll. But let me show you how well this thing cuts. It, it cuts like a saw. I have never had sandpaper that could cut like this. And sometimes you really don't want to cut the curves out as much. I've always wanted to run to sandpaper and now I can. This stuff really cuts really well. One thing I really like about this is I don't have to make the full length either. So if I take this off, I can use a half of a piece and you will have to kind of figure out where it's gonna land. For a three quarter inch to an inch thick piece of wood, this half length works perfect, which saves me even more sandpaper. But what if you don't have a roll? I've been wanting a four inch spindle for a long time, but I think it was something like $70 on the website to, to pick one up. So I just made one. This is oak. Now, if you don't have a spindle sander at all and you just wanna make a drum sander, the same method to making this will work for a drum sander. I have a much more detailed video showing how to do this, but I'm gonna quickly go over it now. Oh, and before anyone asks, this is a little bit too large for a drill press. I think I probably would have done two inches but I was trying to replicate my spindle sander. That's why it's so big. For my four inch roller, I've got four different one inch pieces that are glued together in sets. So I've got two here and I've got two over here. Okay, so if I put that together, it's gonna to be a four inch square. The next thing that I want to do is I want to add that center channel. Now, if I put this together, you can see I've got that square box. At this point, we can just glue these two blocks together. All right, my block is dried now. It's important to understand right now that we're not going to use the drill press to do this. We really wanna make sure that the drill bit follows the natural path that we've created for it. Now we're gonna take this to the bandsaw and we're gonna make a cut and our sandpaper will fit on that and arch around. I'm going to spin this around. This doesn't have to be perfect. We just want to get kind of a rough estimate, but this will help me cut off these corners so that we can move on. I use my bandsaw jig to cut the corners off, but you don't have to make a jig or even need a bandsaw. 
The next obvious choice is to use a lathe, but you don't need a lathe to do this either. Chucking it up in a drill, you can round the edges by spinning it using a sander like a thin strip. Now to add the paper, we'll slide it in the cut we made at the bandsaw. Once it's on, it should wrap around the opposite direction that it spins. Obviously, the larger the diameter, the more sandpaper you're going to need. So far, this four inch size is the only one that needed a couple sheets. And you can see I had a little bit left over, so it goes a long way. And one thing you'll notice is that I haven't glued any of the paper to the actual block of wood, which means that it really doesn't take much to rip this off and put a new piece in. This method works great when you have rubber spindles, but the smaller spindles I have for my oscillating spindle sander uses a steel stud. The smallest stud that I have, the sandpaper slides on like this. This isn't a problem with my jet as I have this little clamp that each of the smaller diameter spindles comes with. And the way this works is this slides in here like this, and then I use a screwdriver that locks it in place so it can't move. But the same thing can be done with the sandpaper. To put this on again, it's gonna wrap the opposite direction and mine spins clockwise. So I'll wrap this counterclockwise. Now I can go ahead and clamp it down. And that's ready to go right there. When I come to my rigid oscillating spindle sander, it's a little bit of a different problem. Whereas I can remove the posts on the other one, this is the default post, you, you can't take it off. The way this works, we put our tube on. This is a half inch diameter, it's the smallest diameter that this will do. Then I'll take a washer, stick it on the top, and tighten the nut. We can still use sandpaper on this, but we have to rethink it a little bit. I'll take a half inch dowel, and I'll take one of the spindles, and I'll push this in, and then I'll use a pencil on the end just to mark the length. I'll use my sandpaper jig and we'll trim it back to that size. Now with the stick, I can do the exact same thing. And there we go. If you don't have a spindle sander, you can still make these small sanding sticks that fit inside the chuck. I have a how-to video of these as well, but we'll just cut into the head of the dowel and slip a corner of the sandpaper in before rolling the sandpaper the opposite way that your drill press spins. And now at the drill press, this fits right inside the chuck and we can tighten it down. Of course, this is not as elegant as a spindle sander, but if you only have to do a little bit, this will work in a pinch. Thank you so much for watching. And again, the links for the, all this is down below. You can go to my webpage and it'll have step-by-step -step instructions as well as material and tools that were used. And check out my sandpaper cutter shorts that I made. It'll be at the end of this video as well. I want to thank my patrons for their support. Thank you, Michelle B, Keith Current, William L. McNally, Jerry Adams, Tommy QR, Zach Finch, Rich Lightfoot, and Tudor the Barbarian. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe, and ring that bell. And I thank you so much for being a part of my shop. Please leave a comment below. Come find me on Instagram at Make Things with Rob. And remember to keep making things.